Hello, welcome to Biomedical Rendering 374A. I'm Jim Dowdles. I want to do a demonstration today. I want to actually do two demos. But the first one is a sketching demo. I've got my paleo skull just like you guys have picked yours out by now, I hope. So I've got it up on my computer screen. You really don't want to use a cell phone for this project. You want to get it projected as, as big as you can. I'm fortunate that I got another screen that I can tap into my laptop here. So, um, you know, iPads are minimally okay, but uh, if you can get it on a larger computer screen, you're going to be much better off. Uh, I've got a drawing board. I've got a, a regular, I think it's 22 by 26. You could also use a, a little smaller one, but uh, our basic size for this project is 14 by 17. And that would be probably a max size. I don't think you need to work bigger than that. So what I've done to help me out with that is, uh, I don't know if you can actually make this out, but I put a red line, a red format, all the way around on the white paper underneath on my board. And you want to do that. You want to put a piece of white paper on your board so that when you put tracing paper, which I highly recommend that we work on, when you put the tracing paper on top of that, you're going to see whiteboard and you're going to feel this surface of paper which is much better to draw on than uh, the masonite so you wouldn't be able to see the drawing if you're drawing on this dark brown masonite anyway so good idea you know put the white paper down and then uh, put a format around it I'm fortunate I have 14 by 17 tracing paper here so that worked out pretty well uh, you don't want to work smaller than that so if you have a bigger roll of sketch paper, which I recommend also, um, you'll be able to see through that tracing paper, and maybe you have 18 by 24 tracing paper, and that's great too. Um, but you really want to know what your parameters are of this project before you get started, what the size of the sketch should be. So basically, that's, this red line is going to keep me uh, within that format. I don't want you to work too small. I'm going to do the demo, which would give you an idea of, of the size for it. And um, other things that we're going to use that I'm using, and it's up to you what kind of pencils you use. I use the red pencil for uh, the outline. And um, if you can get a chopstick for measuring and for sighting and for angles and things like that, that would be great. You can use a longer pencil or a brush, but I highly recommend a chopstick for that. I'm going to sketch with uh, one of my favorite pencils is this uh, color erase from Prismacolor. It's an indigo blue and also I'm going to be sketching, I'll probably refine my drawing a little bit more with uh, just a regular premier indigo blue uh, Prismacolor pencil. Okay, So that's basically what we need to get started. Pick out your reference, put it up on a computer screen, get your drawing board all set up tracing paper, pencils. You can use graphite too. I, I don't really mind graphite. I don't like, sometimes I run my hand across it, I don't like a smear, a smear drawing. So I wouldn't use anything darker than say an HB pencil for sketching, if that's what you're gonna use. I wouldn't use charcoal, charcoal's a mess. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Mm -mm. So, when you get started, what you want to do is set yourself up for success as much as possible. Ideally, your drawing board would be at, at kind of an angle like this, maybe 45 degrees or so to your, to your reference photo. Uh, that way you can do some of the things that I'm asking you to try with uh, the chopstick. Not at the beginning, but as we work through the drawing to refine it. So you'll be able to get angles and bring them down fairly successfully. See if you have more of an angle like this, it's really easy to bring angles like the angle of the jaw uh, down to your drawing and I usually hold it with uh, the opposite hand that I'm drawing with and just make marks and don't do that at the beginning but after we do the gesture drawing. What I started with was a very small little little thumbnail sketch in the corner out of the way and, uh, but I want to be able to refer to it and see it. Um, now it's, it's not just a, an exercise in, okay, so somebody told me to draw a thumbnail. Uh, with this, I'm 
already figuring out what my midpoints are so that I can apply that to my drawing right away. So for instance, um, I found out right at the beginning that uh, the midway horizontally across his, his head, his skull, was about the middle of the eye socket right here. On the reference, because I measured it here and then I brought it over and it's about the same as the top muzzle. So that I just want to make sure that I check that and I'll do that in my big drawing later. I want to do an intuitive gesture first, but uh, these are some of the things that can help the gesture if you know where the, where the midlines are. So the other midline would be the vertical one, and I figured that it was, there's a foramen right here. This is a little hole. A hole is called a foramen. Uh, that's where the nerves and the vessels come through for your face. And uh, I figured out that, and I can show you on here too, you could do this, and then you can do that. And what I want to try to figure out is midway or halfway on the height. So that little foramen I put right there below his eye. And I marked that this and this are equal. And I just checked it back here. Remember, you, you know, you want to be very consistent with your measurements. Always sit in the same area, same place. Have your elbow locked so that you can do that, get that uh, relative measurement. And it works pretty well, okay? So at the very beginning, I want to do an intuitive gesture. I want to draw what I see. I don't want to get bogged down with, um, with detail. I don't want to do any kind of measuring or siding or angles yet. I want to draw what I see first. So I'm going to go fairly quickly and gesturally work my way around the form. What I want is I want to get that overall angle. I can do that. that that overall angle that the skull is giving me, that's about all I'm gonna do at the beginning. Uh, just keep it, keep it really, really, really loose. Midlines, eye line. It's fairly geometric at the very beginning. I'm not gonna, you know, waste any time on organic and, and detail because I probably just end up erasing it and redrawing it and erasing it and redrawing it. You don't want to do that. So what you want to do is work lightly, loosely, uh, watch your symmetry. So I want my eyes in this area here. Um, really lightly at the start, you're probably not going to see anything for a while. Okay, so I think now is a good time to, to do some checking and just to make sure that, that everything's fairly accurate. Start with, let's start with uh, the midlines, the midpoints. So again, I said that the middle of the eye, right about there, was um, equal from the side of the skull here all the way over. So I can bring that out a little bit more. And that's the idea. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to get that. Now, if you feel like this is, should be lengthened over here or shortened over here, you could do that. It's just that these things are, see, this is actually much closer. So, so that's good. So I'll just leave that alone right there. Okay. So that's my midway point horizontally all the way across the skull. All right. So vertically now, I found out that it was just at the bottom of the foramen here. So that's that little hole. There's my little hole right there, right below the eye. So that means if I measure here, then it's equal from here down to here. And you can see that that's pretty close to the way I want it. Okay, so that's my halfway point. So at least I know that I'm in the ballpark now. And what I can also do now is, at this point, it's a good idea to get some angles. So, I'm just going to go, there's a lot of angles here. And 
I'll make them organic later, but I just I want to make sure that that everything is pretty much the way that it should be. Okay, and the angle from the top of his head to the widest point. So that's good. And then from his eye socket to his zygomatic. So I can bring that out. And then the overall angle of his muzzle, not include, I don't, I don't want to come all the way out, but I want to get it right through the edge, would be right here. So I want to make sure that that's pulling away from there. Okay? So that's how I can figure that out. And I'll make adjustments. And I'm, I'm really light, so you know it's easy to make those adjustments now. Okay? So I really want you to do these things. Otherwise, it's just, okay, I drew it. It's fine. It's, it's totally accurate, or maybe it's not. Now let's, let's do these things, and then it can be, it can be much closer to the way it should be. So wherever you can see structure, see how it lines up, you know, especially when it's so light like this, and you can still apply and change. So as I finish up these, some of these techniques for refining shape, form, size, proportion, then it, if, if it's working out okay and I've made the changes that I need to, then I can start working on working up. No detail, but at least strengthen my contour. Um, I've got angles. I made sure that I'm getting my angles right. Wherever I can see those angles, there's an angle through the middle of the teeth. So I want to make sure that those are accurate. The last thing that I want to do is, is the teeth. I, I want to make sure that, that everything is accurate. Proportions are accurate. It's a little bit bigger here. Before I start getting into any kind of detail, um, if your teeth are wrong, if they're in the wrong place and you've already drawn them, you're not going to, psychologically, you're not going to want to move them. Okay. And as I move around, I'm, I'm now on a Prismacolor Pencil Premier. Uh, it's darker than the, uh, than the color erase. You know, that was pretty good for the block in. But I want to continue on now with, uh, with this uh, Prismacolor Darker Premier Indigo Blue still. So I'm now concentrating a little bit more on this muzzle area. We've got the, the mandible and the maxilla. So without doing the teeth, there's a lot of structure uh, that I want to try to bring in. I'm always using the underhand drawing approach on this still, working my way around. Don't want to bring it to point yet, or maybe at all, maybe on my final contour line drawing. But at this point, I still want to stay nice and loose and move around, and this is much easier to do. You probably know that. If you don't, you should try it in detail. There's going to be one more layer after this, which is a contour line. So, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to do it all in one layer, and I don't want you to either. And I did make some corrections or some refinements. Um, my head was coming way out here. The skull was coming way out here, so I brought that in closer to where it should be. So I've got one more chance to contour these a little bit better on my final drawing, but I just want to make sure that, that everything gets blocked in accurately, lightly, and then I can go around and start strengthening my contours.